I'm going to tell you, Jesus never wrote a book. But he said someone would. And he said as long as the sun was in the sky and the moon went around the earth, that his word would not leave the mainstream of the world. I'm going to say it. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. I'm not having enough fun yet. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. It is still the number one bestseller in the world. It is still the number one bestseller in the world. That is why there is nothing more despicable than a modern Christian preacher who doubts the inerrancy of the Bible. That's why you are a disgusting traitor to us. In fact, it was Matthew Henry said in his commentary, Matthew 24, that one traitor inside of the barracks is worse than a thousand persecutors on the outside. And I wanna, I wanna, I'm going to call you out. You're a pastor, you're a minister, and you told people that the Bible is not the Word of God. Shame on you. Shame on you. There, there's not even words for the shame that's on you. Having said all of this, on this important night, the banquet, the banquet, belongs to the marginalized, the disenfranchised. This is the word of God. You have felt like life passed you by. Everybody else got invited to the main events, but not you. And in this story, there's a romance because it's the leftovers, the forsaken, those who are not loved, not in, never have had a shot at what everybody calls success, that were first to sit at a table and eat something that the wealthy were deprived of. Now, is that an attack on the wealthy? Not in any way, shape, or form. Because come, some of the poorest people I know have money. And it is a yawning poverty. And this city reeks with it. I'm from California. I grew up in San Francisco. I know what hollow wealth looks like. And it's this madness I can't come to Christ because of this, this thing. So one day, I got on a jet, and I was invited to sit in first class. And since I'd recently discovered Word of Faith, I looked at the flight attendant and said, I receive it. And I sat next to a drunk man. Oh, he was drunk. And he was all lit up. And he started telling me how rich he was. And the Lord said, shut your mouth. Don't say a word. He said, I own a computer company in Silicon Valley. I invented a certain chip. He goes, I'm rich. I'm wealthy. I take over an entire huge hotel in Hong Kong and in in Honolulu and bring in my, my buddies and we party together. And he went on and on and on. And I'm sitting there and he's looking at me and he asked me, what do you do? <laughs> the Lord said, be quiet. I just nodded. <laughs> and he went on and on and on. I said, listen, I can tell that you're not wealthy like I am. You're, you're an upgrade. And I looked at him, and I knew he was drunk, and I've got to tell you, I'm Latin, and I'm German. Wow. So the Latino side of me said, kill him. And the German side said, what is the matter with you? Control your emotions so you can think of ways to kill him. 
Fortunately, the Holy Spirit won. He said, you want to know what I do? I said, I am a chief spokesman for the richest Jew in the world. Somebody help me right now. That's who I am. And I said, we own planets. We beat Elon into space. His eyes got big. Then he said, you're a preacher, aren't you? I said, I am. Then I got that look, that famous look of someone that thinks their banquet is better than mine. And he kept talking. And God said, keep your mouth shut. He said, let me tell you about me. I have two sons paid their way through Stanford University. On their graduation day, I bought them each a Ferrari. They jumped in, drove off. I haven't seen them in two years. Said, my wife that gave me those two boys, we were married 25 years. Then I got rich, and I replaced her with a trophy wife. And he said, let me tell you about my wife. She's sleeping with the tennis pro at our country club. And his eyes started getting wet. And God said, keep your mouth shut. And he said, you know, I can tell you don't have a lot of money. He kept saying that. I'm, bit, I'm busy asking God for a raise. I'm trying to figure out what it was about me. And then he keeps talking and he keeps talking and he keeps talking. And he said, you know, I look at you. You don't have what I have. I said, that's the third time you said that. He said, but you've got something I don't have. You've got something I don't have. I would to God that those of you out in this house would say the same thing. That you would sit in your chair and say, I may have this and I may have that. But I'm telling you, I have never eaten at the banquet at the table of Christ. I don't know what it means to lay in bed and look up at the ceiling and realize that my life is making God smile. I don't have a friend in God. I don't have the power of prayer. I can't open the Bible and see in it an infallible owner's manual for every conceivable stress that I would ever go through. I can't pray. I can't read it. I can't believe it. This man, this billionaire is looking at me, crying. And you're not going to believe what he did next. He grabs my hand and puts it on top of his head. And he said, what's wrong with you? You know what you're supposed to do right now? Why aren't you doing it? The child of God carries the presence of God with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.